It's a story about a uh, junior that's a, a junior gold explorer that is progressing to uh, development through a series of uh, successful exploration through to some uh, fairly innovative uh, milling agreements to get us into production in a fairly cheap and uh, rapid time frame. So I'll just start with the usual disclaimers. Uh, you can read those at the booth. We haven't got time to uh, really delve into those. Look, the Kalgoorlie North Gold Project, uh, we've been exploring it for about five years now. Uh, it's uh, it's a, a good location in terms of geology. It sits over the intersection of two uh, major mineralising systems, the Bardock Tectonic Zone and the uh, um, Black Flag Fault Structure, both of them mineralised in their own right, Bardock Tectonic Zone being the extensions of the uh, Boulder Lafroy Fault System, which hosts uh, Super Pit uh, and uh, St Ives Gold Camp, so world-class deposits. Um, the intersection of those two structures means that there's a lot of gold mineralisation within our uh, tenements, uh, over 90 gold occurrences. Currently there are 22 uh, gold resources, totalling about 1.4 million ounces of resources. And there's uh, a lot of good ex exploration uh, potential and expansion potential for those resources. The um, beauty of the project is it's close to it, the infrastructure required to, um, to develop it. Um, it sits uh, 30 to 55 kilometres north of Kalgoorlie. It's uh, connected to Kalgoorlie by an all-weather bitumen road. We have a residential workforce. Uh, the 1.3 million ounces are within 20 kilometres of the, uh, the 3.5 million tonne Paddington Mill. Uh, and uh, we have been uh, discussing uh, milling agreements uh, to get this thing into operation with the Paddington operations. We actually have more resources close to the Paddington Mill than Paddington does themselves. Project ore reserves at the moment are 7.14 million tonnes at two grams for 460,000 ounces. The mining partnership with Paddington, we've secured two processing agreements with Norton Goldfields, which has recently just been taken over by its major shareholders, Injin Mining, which is the largest gold mining company in China. Uh, that underpins the security of the Paddington Mill, the fact that there's a, a well-funded uh, major uh, Chinese uh, company now uh, essentially running that uh, operation. Uh, the, the milling agreements, there's two of them. Uh, the capital contribution agreement was uh, signed uh, back in October uh, of last year. This is actually not a normal toll treatment agreement. It is uh, based on the, uh, the fact that uh, Paddington uh, Mill is uh, scheduled for an upgrade and refurbishment and uh, we will be contributing capital to uh, assist with the uh, upgrade of that plant, thereby buying us a minimum of 500 to 650,000 tonnes of uh, milling throughput through that plant. Um, it's a minimum of 500, can be up to 650,000 tonnes. Why would Paddington do that? Because they need oxide feed to actually optimise their mill throughputs. We have oxide feed and we are also contributing capital. It's the same essentially as us buying a 500,000 tonne, 500 to 650,000 tonne per annum plant for a total of $12.5 million. So it's a good deal for us. The benefit is that we get a much lower treatment cost than we could achieve even if we bought our, uh, put, built our own 1 million tonne per annum plant because of the scale of the, uh, the Paddington Mill. Having uh, secured that agreement, we then uh, negotiated another agreement uh, by, called the Bardock South Agreement. This features uh, a series of small open pits in the uh, southern part of our tenements, which uh, we are looking to develop uh, between now and Christmas and essentially uh, mill at the Paddington operations. It doesn't include any capital contribution to the plant. However, uh, it gives us the access to the, the plant uh, at a slightly higher treatment cost, but uh, a lot in a lot shorter time frame. There's actually three pits that are scheduled to be mined uh, between now and the end of December. Uh, the ore reserves are there, 14,000 uh, ounces uh, to be produced, and that provides cash flow for the uh, larger pit developments uh, that contribute to the capital contribution agreement. I've gone through some of the uh, benefits here. Look, it's a lower capital cost to uh, development for us. It gives us uh, more immediate access to a large treatment plant, which is very attractive, uh, and uh, also uh, gives us an annual, uh, annualised average production of around about 32 to 33,000 ounces a year, uh, which increases to about 42 to 45,000 ounces once we bring our underground operations into uh, being in 2019. 
Uh, we retain 100% uh, ownership of, of the project because we're, uh, the company is essentially run by a bunch of geologists and we're very keen on the exploration potential here. We think this is a multi-million ounce area. Uh, we are getting it uh, kicked off into production to give us cash flow to actually demonstrate that. Funding requirements. We require $12.5 million mill for a, our capital contribution to the mill. There's $4 million that uh, we uh, have with an existing facility with uh, Macquarie Bank. It's a convertible loan facility. It expires at the end of uh, December, so we need to repay that. We need about $5.5 million in uh, mine working capital to develop the open pits, and uh, currently we have about $3 million in cash. Just last week, we secured a, uh, a credit-approved uh, $15 million loan facility with uh, Macquarie Bank. Um, basically, it's a uh, $12 million uh, loan facility, uh, repayable by uh, September 2017 and a hedge facility uh, covering uh, 50,800 uh, ounces of Fords and a $3 million core grant. Um, the one requirement for that is that uh, uh, EXG needs to, require, needs to raise uh, equity or a secondary debt of $7 million. Uh, any further explanation on that, just see us at the booth. Um, the mine development, what's that going to cover? There's three development areas in the project. There's the central area, the, uh, the Bardock South uh, area, and uh, the Bulletin South area. The uh, ore reserves are, are up there. Uh, basically, there's four pits in the Bardock South uh, uh, tenements. However, only three are scheduled for mining in the time frame available to us for delivery to the plant uh, by the 31st of December. At that time, the capital contribution uh, agreement comes in and the uh, Zerastrian, larger, much larger Zerastrian pit becomes the main ore source for the capital contribution agreement. The third area, the Bulletin South uh, area, there's a uh, ore reserve there of uh, 450,000 uh, tonnes at, at 2.14. That uh, is uh, a reserve, reserve that will grow in the near future. We have some good exploration results in that area and that will be uh, a much larger uh, development area. Project fundamentals, look, uh, this is a snapshot of where we are at the moment. Uh, it doesn't uh, truly reflect the, the longer term aim for the project, but it reflects what's in our current uh, milling schedule for uh, the Paddington operation over the next few years. There's 3.2 million tonnes uh, of ore to be treated. Uh, grade is 2.74 grams, recovery 92%. All our ores are free milling ores. They are easily leachable in a plant such as Paddington and that produces about uh, 265,000 ounces of, of uh, recovered gold. The, um, the costs there, look at $15.50 an ounce, uh, it's uh, $164 million uh, cash flow from the operations. The um, uh, internal rate of return is about 65% uh, and really the cash costs are quite high for this project at the moment. Uh, C3 costs, uh, given the, uh, the debt level, uh, are quite high. However, we see areas where uh, we can improve those uh, C3 costs. Unfortunately, at the moment, the schedule is very limited in terms of what's in it. Uh, it will be developed uh, further, uh, particularly after 2019, when the uh, underground operations come in. The current uh, mining schedule uh, has uh, about uh, 26,000 tonnes of uh, monthly production from the underground operations, which is a short, significant shortfall in our mill capacity. So we'll be looking to fill that up with additional open pits uh, and uh, basically replace uh, 750,000 tonnes into the, uh, the milling schedule, which will allow us to amortise a lot of our start-up capital costs, particularly the underground start-up capital costs over more uh, ounces. So the C3 costs will come down in the future. Um, just on the Bardock South pits, there's a, a brief summary there of a series of small pits. Uh, the um, close spacing of the, the structures in the area mean that in this particular area, it doesn't uh, 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 develop large deposits. They tend to be smaller, high-grade deposits, but they're nice, uh, small starter pits for uh, the operation. They also give us the opportunity to essentially trial mine before we go into the more uh, rigorous uh, discipline of the capital contribution agreement in January 2016. 
The uh, central area, which is uh, earmarked for most of our development, look, it was previously mined uh, by Aberfoyle Gold back in the, uh, the mid-1980s, early 1990s. There's been about 170,000 ounces of past production from this area. Uh, we've been working on two deposits, the Zoroastrian multi-vein system in the Dolorites there, and also the Excelsior zone, which is a broad shear zone. Uh, current resources are um, you know, mineral resources of 7.14 uh, million tonnes at 2.5 for Zoroastrian. Uh, and uh, the Excelsior deposit is a large, modest grade deposit. It's a base load type deposit uh, for a, a mining operation. 11 million tonnes at 1.3 grams for 456,000 ounces. On the development side, we have uh, mining reserves of, uh, or, or reserves for the uh, open pits and underground at, uh, at Zoroastrian and uh, also the Excelsior deposit. Um, these are, are quite large deposits. They are still open uh, at depth and uh, along strike, uh, particularly to the south in Zoroastrian, and there's uh, potential for growth on these. There's additional satellites in the area. You see the Loch and Var area there, the Navan area. Navan's a uh, modest grade deposit, but it's a laterite deposit that sits, uh, sits uh, at surface. Uh, virtually no strip ratio. So the amazing thing is that this was previously mined. They had a mill located in the central part of those tenements, uh, in the central part of that area there, and yet there are still very significant uh, deposits uh, in, the, in the area. The Zoroastrian deposit itself is a new discovery of uh, mineralisation adjacent to the previously mined Zoroastrian pit. You can see it here. The uh, previously mined pit sits there. We're looking to deepen that uh, it uh, has another 15 metres of development we can go in that, and then the larger Zoroastrian pit sits uh, to the west of it. New discovery in an area that uh, essentially 50 kilometres north of Kalgoorlie, it should have been well explored. However, uh, it is still uh, a relatively unexplored uh, area in terms of deeper drilling and uh, the geological sort of um, models that we have now, when we apply them to this uh, project, we continue to find resource ounces and reserves at uh, quite a low cost. Zoroastrian, this is what it looks like. The resources are there. You can see uh, we ca calculate the resources uh, 0 to 150 metres uh, at a 0.6 gram cutoff, and below that, uh, we use a 3 gram cutoff to mirror uh, underground type grades. Um, all reserves at the moment, the, uh, the open pit uh, extends down to about 100 metres depth and then there's underground operations. You can see there's two uh, north plunging chutes there. It's essentially two underground operations uh, on the one deposit uh, and uh, that's partly why the uh, uh, underground development costs are quite high. It actually relies on currently on the uh, development of two portals to access that underground. The Bulletin South area, look, I, I mentioned that that's a growing area. We uh, have uh, a pit design there. We have uh, indicator resources of 49,500 uh, ounces. We have current ore reserves, uh, 31,000 ounces of reserves. However, recent drilling has come up with some quite spectacular numbers uh, below that pit, uh, 20 metres at 4.4, uh, 25 metres at 3.7. Demonstrates that this pit will uh, grow particularly to the north and uh, we are reworking that uh, ore reserve uh, at the moment. We've got a lot of targets in that Bulletin South area. It's related to the Black Flag Fault structure, which is a very significant uh, mineralising feature. We've got uh, other resources there. Early days in our exploration here, however, uh, we've done some recent tenement acquisitions in this area just to consolidate our position and allow us to do a more uh, 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 extensive uh, exploration program. The, so we see it as a developing mining centre with uh, potential for um, plus 100,000 ounce uh, type deposits. What uh, we, we don't talk much about at the moment is the Excelsior deposit, this large uh, modest grade deposit. Uh, essentially this is a low strip ratio, 4 to 1 strip ratio uh, open pit. Uh, it has uh, ore reserves of 165,000 ounces uh, that we calculated when we did our pre-feasibility study back in uh, uh, March of uh, last year. Um, we see it as a baseload feed for a, uh, a large mill. can be mined at a rate of 2 million tonnes per annum. It is not uh, included in our capital contribution agreement because you do not uh, uh, basically mine it at a 500,000 tonne per annum rate. We will be talking to Paddington about the development of that project at a, at a later date. So just briefly on the company, there's a this com company structure, 490 million shares on issue, market cap of about $41 million. 
uh, $3 million in cash and uh, essentially a board uh, run by, by geologists. So, um, look, this is my Alan Kohler moment where I just sort of say, well, this is, this is what a graph looks like uh, for uh, the evolution of a, uh, a junior explorer. Uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, share price appreciation in the exploration stage, but when you go into the feasibility and development stage, you hit a bit of a trough. So where we sit in this sort of graph is there, and uh, it mirrors pretty well what happens uh, in the, the normal evolution of a company. We like to think that uh, in 2016 we're poised for growth, and uh, certainly we'd like to think that uh, we can emulate that, uh, that development graph. So in, in conclusion, uh, there's a lot of interest in the Kalgoorlie area at the moment. It's based on a lot of uh, corporate activity. Uh, the, uh, the takeovers of uh, uh, La Mancha by Evolution moving into the area, the takeover of uh, Norton Goldfields by its uh, sh large shareholder in Zinjin Mining, the acquisitions of the barrack assets by Northern Star. It is becoming a very uh, intense sort of area in terms of corporate activity, but also these corporate activities demonstrating good exploration uh, successes when people throw money at this ground. Kalgoorlie's not worked out. There's still plenty of gold there. It's just a case of being in the right place at the right time and having the funds to do it. Uh, we have established mineral reserves and, re and resources. Uh, we've got the processing agreements in place and we will be looking to grow this project uh, with cash flow from operations going forward. Uh, we've retained the, the exploration upside because of this and uh, look, we'd like to think that uh, we're going to be moving into a new phase of uh, development for the company and uh, you will see a, a a reciprocal uh, increase in the share price based on that production success. Thank you for your time.